We are just moments away from kickoff between the Chicago Red Stars and FC Kansas City from Bridgeview, Illinois. Hoping that Mother Nature cooperates. Sky's looking a little bit threatening here, but this is how the teams will start out for FC Kansas City. Shea Groom, the leading scorer for the team this season. Well, we talk so much about the national team players, Sauerbrunn, of course, Heather O'Reilly, but the other pieces also make this team go. We've got Avery Butch playing a new position in that center back row. Head coach Vladko Andonovsky said she absolutely has taken that role and run with it and just a leader in that center back spot. A lot of changes to that back line. Love that story with Averbush going back there. And for the Chicago Red Stars and head coach Rory Dames, we weren't quite sure how he was going to arrange his attacking pieces. This is our best guess at this point. Well, you know, we always try to put together a tactical, but players are so versatile these days. It almost doesn't matter what we throw out there because <laughs> they can move around and play just about anywhere. Camo, Huerta, of course, Di Bernardo, a key piece to the center midfield, Colaprico, and then you've got Johnson and Johnson right up the middle in the back. Kristen Press and McCaffrey getting used to one another in that top duo attacking spot. Vladko Andonovsky, head coach for Kansas City, led this team to back-to-back -to -back NWSL titles, and Rory Dames has this team going in the right direction his fifth season as the head coach in this organization. Yes, that predates NWSL, but the team making the playoffs for the first time last year. And as we get things started, it will be FC Kansas City wearing white, moving from left to right on your screen. The Chicago Red Stars wearing the light blue uniforms and Brittany Taylor quickly trying to pick out Heather O'Reilly. A couple of things you might be looking for early here, Kendra. Well, I just want to see the possession that we hear so much about from the Chicago Red Stars team. Yesterday, it was really fun to talk to them, to the whole group, and just they are excited about what they have going on this season. They've got everybody back. Of course, after that Olympic break, that new piece with McCaffrey up top, still kind of learning her way in this situation with this group. And it's going to just be fun to see how they combine up the middle of the field and get in on the attack. Yeah, Stephanie McCaffrey coming over to join Chicago via trade with the Boston Breakers on July 22nd. Interesting piece added to this puzzle. Have to watch out for the speed of O'Reilly will pressure that back line of Chicago. Heather O'Reilly in the news recently announcing her retirement from international soccer. 15-year career with the U.S. national team. You've heard nothing but the most exemplary pra praise for her as a teammate. And she plays a pretty big role in this Kansas City team as well. Blues working deep into Chicago's territory at the moment. And now the ball goes out of bounds for a goal kick. A couple of great goalkeepers in this match for both teams. For Chicago, Alyssa Nair, one of the changes for this team from last season. And to be quite candid, when we talked to Rory Dames, he said, we made no secret that after last season, look, they, they took a big step. They made the playoffs for the first time. They want to go farther. They knew they needed to upgrade their goalkeeping position. Well, and he wasn't taking anything away from the goalkeeper that he had last season, but there's just a difference about Alyssa Nair. She's got a leadership quality. She's solid. The confidence that she has, it passes on to the rest of her teammates in that spot. Turnover. O'Reilly on the ball for Kansas City. Her shot blocked. And going back to Nair real quick, it's the direction, it's the organization, it's the experience that she brings to that position. It's just, you know, when you have a piece like that in the back, even if your team is having one of the worst days, your goalkeeper can keep you in the game. And that's a little bit what she did just the other day against Seattle. They had a rough first 20 minutes, and she made some pretty incredible saves. If you haven't seen the highlights, go check it out. It's on the Chicago Red Stars Twitter feed for one. You can see some pretty amazing goalkeeping in a match that saw Chicago battle back for a big point, 2-2 draw. First corner kick of the match coming. All curled in near post. Initially cleared, but it goes back to the feet of Kansas City. Ball put back in play and over the crossbar. Well, already right now, FCKC having quite a bit of the possession. 
in their offensive third of the field, putting some pressure on here, trying to force the issue with Chicago just a few minutes in. But we knew FCKC, they're not their normal selves. It's not quite the top of the table like they were the past couple seasons, but they're not lacking in talent and effort. And Coach told us they might be better this season than last year, especially with what they've had to go through, not just physically, but mentally, some of the challenges they face this season at Kansas City. And I love how Coach Andonofsky said, we had to be better. We had to all learn how to work harder. We couldn't get away with quite as much when you lose some of the pieces that they lost in a Lauren Holiday, in an Amy Rodriguez, in a Jen Buzkowski. They knew everybody was going to have to help pick up that slack. Chicago now with a chance. Kristen Press on the ball, looking on the inside for McCaffrey, who's open in the box, and then just at the last moment, Nicole Barnhart with the save. Well, and just like we know in the game of soccer, it only takes one time for the opposition to head the other direction, and a beautiful ball slided right in behind the D. McCaffrey might have wanted to take that one one touch. You know she's going to want that one back. She's Love. already got a couple goals in the four games she's played with this team. It's going to be fun to watch that combination between her and Press. Absolutely. Two goals in four matches, as you said, for McCaffrey. This was the last chance. And look at first a nice lofted ball right over the top. Press takes a nice touch. Probably needed to be one touch there because you know you've got a goalkeeper like Barnhart. She's not going to mess around. Coming off her line at the right angle. Lays down and just corrals that ball in. I think he called it exactly right, though. McCaffrey touches that first time, takes a quick shot. Not sure that Barnhart would have been able to save it. Beautiful ball sent in from Press. It was really a nice series all the way around on that attack by Chicago. Nicole Barnhart just once again doing her thing, leading the NWSL in saves, tied for first in shutouts. Do you know she has led this league in shutouts? every single year of its existence? That does not surprise me. I mean, there's just some incredible, solid goalkeepers in this league. Chicago once again on the attack. This is Erin Gilliland, the right back. She loves to get up and attack for her team. Ball in the box on the ground. Now it's kicked back out. Casey Short, new left back this season, takes the wow. shot off the post. What a left-footed rocket from Casey Short, and look at the two outside backs getting in on that attack for Chicago. But look at the counter chance opportunity now for Kansas City. This is a key moment when they can take advantage of that aggression. Inside the box, the shot and a goal! Leading scorer, Shea Groom was there and finished it. Well, and how about the work by Heather O'Reilly? The quick counterattack, they told us yesterday that Coach Andonofsky said, we are going to have to find a way to counter the numbers forward that Chicago puts. And right now, look at this. First, it started from the middle of the field. A beautiful ball. Francis Silva finds Heather O'Reilly, who has the ability to float. She's got some freedom up there to come up the middle, get down the flank, takes a nice touch to the end, picks her head up, finds her teammate. Beats Julie Johnson on that play. Do you see her pick her head up right there? She's putting it on a spot. She's just not serving it into the box without picking up her spot right there. And Shea Groom, the leading scorer for Kansas City, continues. Chicago quickly down, looking for an answer. Left-footed shot, another ball off the post. Is this a bit reminiscent of the oh. semifinal? I mean, where Chicago actually had some pretty impressive, incredible possession in the first 20, 30 minutes of that game and had created some offensive opportunities. And Kansas City was able to capitalize on the counter and some mistakes. Two posts already here today and one an additional breakaway by McCaffrey where she probably should have taken one touch instead of two. Otherwise, the Red Stars, it would at least be an even match right now. But you're absolutely right, though, as Chicago hitting the hardware a couple of times and the attack they are still pressing. I mean, this is an aggressive, relentless team. Those are some of the words that they use to describe themselves. And on the same token, that's exactly what Kansas City was hoping to take advantage of on the counter. And they play it through the young player in Shea Groom, Texas A&M alum who, with seven goals on the season now, is doing what her coach always knew she could do. 
he had high praise for her yesterday, but high criticism in a constructive sense. He's known her for a long time, Shea Groom, since I believe, what, she was 9, 15. You know, he's coached her along the ranks and has just such high expectations. Chicago on the attack again. Some time in the box. The ball sent away as Becky Sauerbrunn and the defense break things up. <laughs> DiBernardo has played a huge role for Chicago this season. Short gets it up top. Shot from press. Deflected. See Chicago really bringing some numbers up into the attack. Press again on the ball. And that ball a little bit too far out in front. A little bit too much on that one, but you can see the movement on the outside there. Sofia Huerta kind of pinched in on that right flank, and she's got that overlapping run constantly happening from Gilliland on that right back side. And that's going to create some problems for Kansas City. They're aware of it, but it doesn't necessarily mean you can stop it every time when you have numbers like that coming at you. I think you really look for the response from Chicago in these moments after conceding the early goal. Heather O'Reilly looking up, seeing her target. And Shea Groom, their seventh goal of the season. Once again, Kansas City going quickly the other way. And they told us yesterday, talked to Heather O'Reilly and Becky Sauerbrunn, and they said, you know, we feel like we're kind of figuring things out now. We wish we had a few more games to play in the season because they just needed time. They needed time to instill, as they called it, the Kansas City mentality and a lot of their new players this year. Chicago, meanwhile, has really shown a lot of fight. Now, I will say, Rory Dames did not like the way his team came out in their last match against Seattle, but they have a chance here once again on the attack. Looking for press along that right side, but the ball will be too far for her to catch up to. But he said, we've played great on the stress. They're five unbeaten, he said, except for the first 20 minutes of that Seattle game. But they recovered. And I think that's something else he was really pleased with, the fact that they came out, did not play anywhere near their best soccer, and they found a way to get a tie in that game, which was a huge point for them to come away with. Yep, gave up two goals in the first 10 minutes in that one. So again, they find themselves in an early hole. Will they find the fight to come back this time? With a win and a little bit of help from some of the other teams, they have a chance to get in the playoffs. A short sends a long ball toward Barnhart. For a second there, it looked like she was trying to chip Barnhart, but I think that cross just got away from her, trying to bend it away from the keeper. Silva. Under some pressure, but it'll be a Kansas City throw. McCaffrey, kind of alone up there. Tries to get through three or four defenders, can't do it. Desiree Scott, haven't said her name yet for Kansas City, but the Canadian international who's coming off a bronze medal in the Olympics always makes her presence felt in the midfield. They were happy to have all of the players back from the Olympic break. I think, if anything, just to continue to develop that chemistry and those breaks the last two seasons for the World Cup and the Olympics have been tough. It's been a challenge. Chicago in the box. Press, nice move, takes a shot, bends it in. What a beautiful goal! What a finish by Kristen Press. Just clinical in her finishing. I mean, we just talked about Barnhart being one of the top keepers, of course, in the country and in the world and her abilities. But look at Kristen Press, just picks it apart. Two, three little moves, gets it back on that right foot, inside of the right foot, bends it around Bar Barnhart, side netting. What a finish. Just gorgeous. And 
she's taken advantage there. We mentioned Yael Averbush in a brand new position on that back line and the wily Kristen Press doing some damage. I thought the move to get herself open was pretty. The finish even better, and she's on the move again. Counterattack chance for the Red Stars now, but Press needs some help, or does she? Finally, Becky Sauerbrunn comes in and says, I've had enough of that, my friend. That's when the second defender really comes in handy, even in tight quarters inside her own six-yard box. Again, she beats Yael, Yael Averbush a little bit there, but Kristen Press has the ability to get you a little crossed up, but that's why you have a second defender to come in and help you out. Seventh goal this season for Press as well. And limited appearance with her national team duty. This is just her 12th match of the season. Now a corner kick coming for Chicago. Bent toward that back post, Barnhart has it! Are you telling me they just hit the post again? I think it did. I think Huerta came in on that backside. Barnhart looks like she tipped it. And then Sofia Huerta got a head on it. I thought it went post or crossbar on that far post. Let's see. Uh, maybe a knuckle, the back of Huerta's head, off the post and out. <laughs> got a little bit of everything on that one. I hope you're ready for an entertaining match because if these first 15 minutes are any indication, I think the attacking prowess, the aggressive mentality of the Chicago team, fun to watch, and Kansas City proving very dangerous when they have had a chance to be on the ball. Gillan out of the University of Kentucky takes the throw, but it's quickly taken away by Scott in Kansas City. Shea Groom really didn't have anywhere to go, courtesy of Julie Johnson. Julie Johnston, I knew I was going to do that. With Johnston and Johnson on the back line, I should Both in the center that back up. spot. Sorry, Julie. Hey, oh, coming at you now. O'Reilly. Johnston gets it out of the way. Johnston, just one of those players has the ability to use her body so well. We've seen it in the NWSL and, of course, at the international level. Again, some of that speed up top. Those forwards are so quick to be able to make one touch and go around. And we saw it right there against Shea Groom. She uses her body well to get the ball and win it back. And to have outside backs that get aggressive and attack as much as Chicago likes to do. You really have to have a certain type of player that you know is going to hold down the fort in the middle, and certainly Julie Johnston, one of those. Johnston long ball up ahead. Kristen Press gets there. The foul is actually going to go against Press. She's wondering what the call is there. Dangerous play from Sauerbrunn, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I have no idea. I mean, either you just, that's a no call in my opinion. I mean, maybe a little bit of a high kick, but if anything, that should be going the other direction. All right. Unless it was a handball. I mean, I can't think of anything else. Maybe when Sauerbrunn flicked that ball up and over the head, Press caught it with her arm, but I didn't see it. Chicago pressing again. Base is short. Johnston will try to find some space out wide. Chicago, once again, getting into the box, but running out of real estate. Huerta has been busy the last few minutes. Well, and you can see on that right flank, she's trying to take on players and get to end line, but sometimes she likes to cut in because she's an attack-minded player. So when you also have Gilliland coming in from that right back spot, sometimes it can get a little crowded up there and they run out of space. So Gilliland stepped out to create an opportunity for Huerta to get in behind. Driven ball this time off the corner toward the goal. Still alive in there. Johnston 
Errant touch will be a throw for Kansas City, but my goodness, the set pieces. A little chaotic on the yeah. clearances right now. Kansas City having a bit of trouble. And that ball is inside the 18-yard box, getting a good solid clear. It's bounced around a few times. And an interesting stat to note, Kansas City defensively has actually been pretty solid this season, as Vladko Andonovsky told us. Their goals against per game ratio, same as it was last year, where they were the best defense in the league. Bouncing ball in the box, headed away by Averbush. But of the 17 goals they gave up in their first 17 games, 10 of them came off of set pieces. Well, and not only that, but they're creating only two or three good offensive opportunities as opposed to last season, maybe eight or nine. So you're giving up goals the same amount, but you are not scoring quite as many. That, that'll happen when you take A-Rod out of the picture. Di Bernardo with the service on the corner toward the far post, headed behind the goal by Huerta. Sofia Huerta, second on the team in scoring for Chicago this season behind Kristen Press. Five goals, one assist. And as Vlatko Andonovsky was telling us about his team and the season, which he described as a good season, Frustrated with the results, yes, they'd like to do better. But proud of the way that all of his players have grown and worked harder. And he put goalkeeper Nicole Barnhart in that mix, a 34-year-old goalkeeper out of Stanford, who's a veteran, former US national team goalkeeper. He said she's been better this year than she was the last three years. As once again, O'Reilly speeding things along for Kansas City, but has it taken away. Now some space and a chance. Chicago's going to go out wide for Press. Her move does get around Sauerbrunn, but a little too much on the ball. Johnston sees some space on the other side. Big switch, can't quite get it over to short. Katie Bowen, the New Zealand international, in that left back position for Kansas City. Well, an interesting watching how the players in the midfield and up top are kind of moving around and rotating for FC Kansas City right now, trying to find their opportunities, whether it's up top with Shea Groom. And of course, we knew that Heather O'Reilly was going to play a little bit more of an attacking midfielder role, but. Long ball off the head of McCarty, flicked into the box. Gilliland has Silva right on her toes. Let's see what our referee has to sort out. Farad Dodko, our referee for tonight's match. Kansas City working that far sideline. We'll have a deep throw here. Gilliland works so hard, goes up and down like a maniac, in the words of head coach Rory Dames. She's not lacking in fitness, that's for sure. We were at training yesterday, and it was pretty toasty out. All in the box, bouncing around. Short gets to it before any Kansas City player can. Scott on the ball now for Casey. Aver Bush trying to pick out O'Reilly. Groom up there as well. I think one thing you're talking about the attack and the Kansas City players shuffling around that Heather O'Reilly told us was we are better when it's not just Shea Groom up there. We have got to collectively attack and get numbers around her. They may be in a 4-2-3-1, but they've got to give her some help when they have the ball in their attack. 
And I think that's why Heather O'Reilly is so important when she is the attacking center mid right underneath. Right here, we can see her pushed up a little more level with her on that front line in certain instances. But for the most part, if she can find a way to slot in underneath Groom and then find a way to combine and get forward together, you know it can be a dangerous combination. Ball taken away. Bowen loses it though, right back to Gilliland in Chicago. Who wants it? Sauerbrunn will try to settle things down. And gives it right back to the opponent. Sure doesn't seem like the ball has seen this near side in quite some time for either team. Hasn't seen the ground much lately. Been there we go, she can keep it. Yeah, Brittany Taylor with plenty of time and space to work with. Rachel McCarty. Too slow. Has to just be a little bit quicker with from McCarty with those touches. And bad touch by Amber Bush will give the throw in to Chicago. Fans trying to make some noise for the Red Stars. Chicago, as we said early on, unbeaten at home this season. Only league, only team in the league who can make that claim. Gilliland. Caffrey. Can't get around Sauerbrunn. Good help defense there by Chicago to regain possession. There's some patience just swinging around the back under pressure. Samantha Johnson finds press, now short. Short, now sends service across the box. In the middle, the shot is deflected off two players. Barnhart was down, needed some help from her defense and she got it. One game after Kansas City got on the board first and then Chicago finding the answer through Kristen Press. Shea Groom gave the visitors the early lead. I like the little Vanessa DiBernardo song that's going on in the stands right now. This that last chance by the Red Stars. One a nice little quick turn there. Couldn't quite get it. And again, the defense coming up big time for Kansas City. Getting just enough on it to block that shot. But again, the outside backs for Chicago so dangerous as Short getting in on the attack. DiBernardo tied for the league in the league with assists, but just itching for that goal. She is really wanting to get that first goal. She went over to Australia during the offseason and played on loan over there and had no trouble scoring, but she was in a different role playing forward and attacking mid there, there. So she wanted to carry that over to the Red Stars. Hasn't happened quite yet this season from a goal scoring standpoint. She set her teammates up quite a bit though. Six assists, tied for first in the league. Taylor. Keeps it herself. Now finds the cross. Silva couldn't pick it out of the air. Good hustle out, keep the ball in bounds. Scott. Has it taken away. Kansas City has some numbers this time, but Chicago pretty organized defensively at the moment. Now a chance along that far sideline. Cross sent in, and Taylor awaits, takes the shot. Woo, she puts some power and some bend on that ball, but Alyssa Nair up for the challenge. That one looked like it was knuckling. And Taylor, another one of those converted forwards who now plays outside back. 
tremendous career at UConn. Actually made the switch to defense in college after leading the team in scoring and then played some defense there. Was an all-star at WPS with Sky Blue FC. I told you, busy night. As you can see, some rain coming down out there on our field. All 10 teams in action tonight around the NWSL. All four playoff teams could be decided. Can't get a look at some of the scores. A couple of the games started early. Boston up over Western New York. Great match between Washington and Seattle. Deadlocked at the moment. Press. Nifty little turn, but couldn't get the shot. A nifty little turn, but Huerta was wide open. And Press had let that ball go through. She looks like she maybe took a little bit of a knock there. She tried to bring that one down, and I don't know if Huerta was even calling her off, but she looked pretty open on that far post that, that ball had gone through. Do you do that? Do you call Kristen Press off the ball? Oh, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't, but maybe Huerta could. You know, she's had uh, quite a bit of success scoring some goals herself this season with five. Di Bernardo's corner kick headed but not away yet. Now Kansas City gets it clear, but they're going to have to defend a corner from the other side. And I have a feeling Press has the kind of personality that she'd be quite all right with it if Agreed. she had a teammate in a better position to finish one. So Di Bernardo will come over to take the corner on this side as well. Vanessa played collegiately at Illinois. She's from Naperville, playing in front of her home city, really. Getting some good opportunities off these corners. Well, every weekday morning, Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp go head to head on the day's hottest sports topics. Undisputed with Skip and Shannon weekdays at 9.30 a.m. Eastern, 6.30 a.m. Pacific, only on FS1. Heather O'Reilly with some space in the box. Casey Short defending. Ball deflected. That'll be a corner. One again, Heather O'Reilly now floating out to the right side. We talked about how she really has the freedom to roam just about anywhere to try to create for this Kansas City offense and creates a corner on that chance. And she really does bring a unique skill set. I always felt that with the national team as well. So much speed and she finds space, puts defenses under a ton of pressure. Not the service she wanted that time. Bowen. Pops the ball back in. I just remember watching her, no matter where you put her on the field, in those international competitions with the national team, she was high press all the time. It's like the Energizer Bunny out there and the communication level coming from her, just so much energy, positive energy all the time. Johnston cannot clear it cleanly. Silva wanted a call there, but no whistle by our referee. That's one of those you almost have to take at the replay. Take a look at the replay. It's a hard time for the referee to make that judgment call in real time. Bodies getting tangled up. But Silva didn't look happy with the no call. Short once again, advanced position for Chicago. Red Stars trying to keep possession in the offensive third. They pass it back to Johnston. I 
And this will be a Chicago throw. Good defending by Silva. Still have to do a little more of it, though. That ball top of the net and out of danger. I think the addition of Stephanie McCaffrey, really interesting one for this Chicago team. And remember, as we talked about, they're really still trying to get comfortable with her. And especially with Kristen Press, with the Press being away for some time at the Olympics, of course, and then trying to get back and get comfortable, figure one another out. Well, she was very honest with us yesterday in our meeting, McCaffrey, just saying, when I first came to this team just before the Olympic break, she was sort of running around trying to do everything, prove herself, make her mark. And it wasn't until she had that three weeks when everyone else was gone for that Olympic break and they had some time to really learn the tactics of the team and the Red Stars, what they were trying to do, what the game plan was, and how she fit into it, that she started to really feel comfortable with the system. I love that she said there's so much talent around her, it really gives me a lot more free space. I just have to figure out the best way to make use of that space. About 10 minutes remaining in our first half. It's been a good one. Scoring came early from both teams. Ooh, I wanted a big switch. You could see on this side, Short was making a good run. On the left flank, she is wide open over here. That one just mishit. Yeah, a little too ambitious from Samantha Johnson. Nice turn by Mandy Laddish, but a turnover in a dangerous spot. Finds McCaffrey, Horta. Gilliland now. Former Kentucky Wildcat on the move. But cleared away by Sauerbrunn. Again, that second defender just in there. I mean, Becky Sauerbrunn, everybody talks about. Of course, she's talented, she's skilled, she's technical, but she's so smart. Positionally, always in the right spot at the right time. Well, you sense that she has a lot more to do this season, and I mean that in no way to disrespect to the players around her, but when you lose three of your four starting defenders, as FC Kansas City did, and you've got people like a Yale Averbush who are trying to learn a relatively new position, then all that leadership and smarts of Sauerbrunn become all the more important. Corner from Di Bernardo, driven near post. Headed away, right back. Short with the header and into the gloves of Barnhart. Casey Short in her first year with the Chicago Red Stars. Was drafted to play the NWSL by Boston in 2013, but then really missed a couple of years with knee injuries, decided to go over to Norway and play, and then this year came back, and she is a local product out of Naperville Central High School. Was inducted into their Hall of Fame in January. Incredibly decorated high school career for Casey Short, getting a chance now to play in her home state. Well, and Coach Rory Dames basically said, look, I've waited three years for Casey Short to come to this team between the injuries, getting drafted by Boston and heading to Norway and having some pretty, pretty good play there as well. He's been waiting three years to get her into this roster and on this lineup. Yep, short in the top 11 of the top division in Norway. O'Reilly making a run now as Groom's gonna take it herself. Taylor. Camo. Good defending Knocked there by off. Shea Groom. She wasn't giving up on that ball after she took a shot and it got blocked. 
hustled back and got the ball back for her team. McCarty and short to Seminoles going head to head. Now the ball up ahead to Mandy Lattish. Shot from McCarty. I mean, do you have a feeling at this point? It's been exciting first half. Do you have a feeling as we get close to halftime here of maybe who's had the advantage? I really don't because I think the goals have almost come against the run of play in those exact moments where you kind of felt the other team was pressing and getting some good chances and then it comes right the other direction or Chicago what hit two three posts had a breakaway blocked by Barnhart and then Kansas City went down and scored really even match the first 15 20 minutes were more of a flurry than it has been the last 20 anybody's game in the second half and a reminder what is on the line for both of these teams. It's a pretty steep uphill battle. You talked about it in the open. Kansas City not technically eliminated from the playoff picture yet, but a lot has to happen for them to be able to have their season continue. They have to win this. You need to know that. And for Chicago, they can get in with a win and a Seattle loss or draw. There's the playoff scenario for Kansas City. Help clear that up for you a little bit. So they have to have a win. That's really all they need to worry about. And right, then for the Chicago Red Stars, we're not talking elimination here. We're talking clinching a playoff spot. You can see the if-then situations that involve the Red Stars as this ball is going end-to-end -end on the field and finally winds up at the feet of Barnhart. Laddish will pass back to Sauerbrunn. Chicago now starting to collapse on the ball. I think you would say, Kendra, the way that the seasons have played out, you certainly have to consider Chicago the favorite in this one. In your opinion, what do they need to do to gain an advantage in the second half or maybe in these last few minutes here of our first half? Well, I think they're using the width of the field really well. I, I think they could probably use this near side a little bit more, switch it up. We saw Casey Short get involved a few times, but the ball seems to get stuck right now on that far side quite a bit because Gilliland, she loves to get up and down and, what did they say yesterday? Like a crazy woman? <laughs> yeah. So in a good way. And of course, again, I think they need to find a way to get McCaffrey and Press working together. When they get that ball up top, how can those two combine together in that transition in that final third? And by the same token for Kansas City, you know, I think they probably feel pretty pleased with where they're at at the moment, especially considering those number of posts that Chicago hit in that early flurry of activity. We'll see what they do on. This chance here is quickly under pressure was O'Reilly, but it goes right to the feet of Shea Grew McCarty, but the offside flag is up. Quite Nair collision. came out, yeah, quite a collision there. Nair, Nair came out pretty hard on that play. Tiffany McCarty was clearly offside. We saw the assistant referee's flag go up almost immediately, but the whistle was a little bit late, and I think that's what caused the collision. Because Nair, of course, she's going to come out hard and defend her 18-yard box until that whistle blows. But you could see right there, you thought it was going to be a Kansas City turnover, and quickly, just like that, it turns into a nice little through ball to McCarty and almost finds her feet. And Alyssa Nair making no mistake about it. Pretty big opportunity in front of her in terms of international play. I haven't talked much about that yet, but with Hope Solo's situation, Alyssa Nair, the heir apparent at the moment, and goal for the U.S. national team. Exciting times for her. Short with the shot from distance. Well, 
coming up at halftime, we will talk about the U.S. national team, show you first half highlights and stats. A lot in the news lately. A couple of players with ties to this Kansas City team have been in the news recently. We'll catch you up on all of that. Take a look back at what has been a pretty intense and exciting first half of action. This is the third meeting between these two teams this season. Third of four, they're going to turn around and play each other again on Sunday in Kansas City. First couple of matches were a 0-0 draw and then a 1-0 win for Chicago. So that goal by Shea Groom early in this one, the first time Kansas City had been able to find the back of the net against Chicago this season. Well, I think it goes back to what we said earlier in the broadcast. They are creating two or three really good offensive opportunities each game this season as opposed to eight or nine last year, and they have to be able to capitalize on those chances, and that's exactly what they did with that play from O'Reilly right to Shea Groom. Brittany Taylor to McCarty, who has some space if she turns, and she does. Flicks a little bouncing ball into the box. Groom couldn't quite get to it. Alyssa Nair not quickly happy. off the line. Well, and you could see her reaction there. Yes. She was not happy about her quick outlet pass trying to find Kristen Press, but finds the out-of-bounds line instead. She's intense. She's intense. She's a perfectionist. She knows a missed opportunity when she sees one. You never want to give a team another chance. As Short and McCarty once again tangling up with one another. Yeah, those two was trying to see if they overlapped at Florida State. They're just a year apart. McCarty 25 and Casey Short 26. And that will do it for the first half. A couple of early goals. Kansas City first through Shea Groom and then Kristen Press with just a gorgeous goal to even things up. Anybody's game at this point. Started out fast and furious, firing on both cylinders. I think the adrenaline was pumping for both teams. Slowed down there the second half of that first half. It'll be interesting to see who comes out more fired up as we get underway at the, at the second half. And we are waiting for Rory Dames, head coach of the Chicago Red Stars. He joins us now. Coach, well, you told us your team is relentless, showed a lot of fight. You got in an early hole. What did you see from your team to come back and even this thing one up? I thought we had a better start than we did on Sunday, other than uh, giving away the goal. A bit unfortunate with some of the posts that we've hit. Uh, but we lost our pace a little bit as the half went on. So our quality around the goal is going to have to be a little bit better. We're going to have to move the ball a little quicker. Yes, not lacking in offensive opportunities in that first half. What do you attribute the lull to to wrap up the half there? Uh, fatigue. I think both groups having to play Sunday and turn around and play Wednesday is hard. Uh, it was very hot at the beginning of the game. So I, I think it's just fatigue. Whichever team can uh, push through a little bit here in the second half, probably come out ahead. All right, Coach, thanks so much. No problem. Appreciate hearing from Rory Dames and his team right now tied 1-1 with FC Kansas City. What a match it's been so far. We're going to talk the U.S. national team and look back at this first half of action. But the score, 1-1 after 45. 